All right, everyone, this is Josh Room from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about heme versus non-heme iron. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that there's a huge topic going around in our community about anemia, iron, copper, iron overload, iron recycling. But unfortunately, in my opinion, and I have a lot of opinions, it's becoming a huge web and creating more confusion. And at the same time, it's now being bastardized and turned into exactly how the medical model looks at it. So if you're interested in learning more about heme and non-heme iron, stick around. All right, so let's talk about heme versus non-heme iron. And this is really important because when you talk about anything, anemia, iron, iron recycling, doesn't matter. It's very important to understand this distinction, but two very important pieces. Now let's talk about heme, heme iron. Heme is found in animal flesh, right? We find it in meats, we find it in organ meats, animal flesh. It's gonna be an animal protein, anything that had eyes at one point. Now, this doesn't mean that if you eat organ meats, let's say, or you eat red meat, or you eat chicken, that you're gonna get high iron. This is not how it works, right? No one in the world is gonna get high iron from eating organ meats or anything that includes iron because we have an iron recycling system, recycling system, right? Just like we have a recycling system in our house where we put trash in a recycling system, we bring it outside, then the truck comes and get it. It never keeps building up. Doesn't matter how many cans of carbonated water we drink, it gets taken away, right? So you can't end up with high iron from eating organs. But here's the thing. We have an iron recycling system called the RES, reticulant endothelial system, which is a copper rich enzyme driven system. There's enzymes, in the hepatocytes and pterocytes, red blood cells, spleen and bone marrow that help you recycle iron out of the warehouse to get it into the street, which is the blood. But those enzymes, some of them have fast and ferroporin ferrooxidase are copper driven, so if you have copper to activate, we can't recycle the iron. Well, heme iron that we find in animal flesh based on its molecular form is 95% absorbable and can be used through the RES system. Interesting, right? And if you look at our society, what are some of the most important foods that we're not eating to support the iron recycling system? We're talking about fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, heron, sardines, of course, eggs and dairy, but those are very denatured. And we're talking about organ meats, right? People don't get enough fatty fish. We don't get enough seafood. We don't get enough shellfish and we don't get enough organ meats. I've always said this and I've said this for 22 years, 23 years now. If people would just get away from chicken, eggs, and steak and start eating more fish and fatty fish and shellfish and whitefish, not saying that's all you have to eat, and a little bit more organ meats, you would see over time a huge shift in your healing process. Now, non-heme iron is found in nuts and seeds and vegetables and grain. Non-heme is less than 5% absorbable and based on its molecular form, it cannot be recycled through the iron recycling system and does very little to support anything that requires iron in the body. The other issue is when you talk about, you know, these in general, of course, this is specific to specific ones, but like nuts and seeds, they contain phytates which block mineral absorption, right? Um, grains, a lot of processed grains are fortified with iron, right? Anytime, and this is an elemental iron. This is not the iron you find that's heme in um, organ meats or, or chicken or in steak and things like that. This is the heavy metal. There's an iron fortification system. And the problem is when you overload the body with that, it has no way of getting rid of it. And at any time iron goes up in this form, copper is gonna get driven down, then you can't support the iron recycling system. As well, you have certain vegetables that are sprayed with, spray with pesticides or glyphosate is used, which chelates copper from the soil. So now we can't get enough copper, but also affects copper negatively in the body, which affects how we load copper into bioavailable copper. So we can't, we, 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 it affects the metabolism of copper, let's say. So in a sense, if we want to support anemia, if we want to support iron recycling, if we want to support iron overload, copper, it doesn't matter. You look at it. Why would we choose non-heme? I'm not saying vegetables are bad. I'm not saying you can't eat nuts and seeds. That's not what I'm saying, but this is what a lot of people are doing. We need to be eating more of the proteins, right? Cause this is where we get our fat soluble vitamins. This is where we get our minerals. It's the only place. Right, especially when you talk about heme and non-heme and how the body works. The other important key when you think about this, besides thinking, well, if I wanna support my body, if I wanna support nature and give the body what it needs, I need to give it more heme iron. That's like saying, you know, 
my car takes diesel, well, I'm gonna, you know, not, I don't wanna give it diesel because it's expensive. I'm gonna choose, you know, uh, unleaded or something else. You, you, that engine thrives on that. Our engine thrives, our recycling system thrives on that heme iron. So why would we choose non-heme iron? The second reason, as I mentioned, is the reticulum endothelial system is a copper rich driven system. So when you're eating these foods, and there's much more to it, but when you're eating these foods, you have to think about it. it's not about the iron because iron doesn't regulate iron. Retinol and copper does, but really retinol because retinol allows us to load copper into ATP 7A and B. So now we have this bound copper, which is ceruloplasmin, which is bioavailable copper, which helps us activate oxygen at cell level, produce energy, which is money in the bank to reduce inflammation, which helps us produce our copper rich antioxidants, dichrome oxidase, um, glutathione peroxidase, all these different copper rich antioxidants, which helps us with free radicals and oxidation in the system, which is inflammation. At the same time, ceruloplasmin activates complex four, so we don't have to like divulge ourselves with red light therapy. We can go outside and now we have the, the system to support the sunlight coming in. But it also helps us recycle iron through the enterocytes, hepatocytes, red blood cells, spleen, and bone marrow. Now you're supporting the system. It's not just about the iron. It's about the retinol, about the copper, right? We don't get enough of these foods. There's no way you can get a toxicity. The only way you're going to get a toxicity of retinol is from taking supplements. The only way you're going to get a toxicity of from copper is if you don't have enough retinol in your diet and you're not able to load that copper, right? Because you're maybe relying on supplements, synthetic supplements, or are you relying on the wrong type of heme, the non-heme? So hopefully this makes sense. As always, if you have comments, I'd love to know. Put them in the comment section. Thank you always for your support. I'm out.